Hello, everyone. Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii. I'm Sharon Thomas Yarbrough, host of Sister Power. Our topic is When Women Thrive, Communities Prosper. Sister Power guest for today is Leela Bims Goldstein. Leela is Executive Director of Women's Fund of Hawaii, a grant making foundation dedicated exclusively to supporting women and girls statewide. She makes up half of the nonprofit's two person staff and is responsible for everything from donor and grantee outreach, fund and friend raising events, and keeping the lights on. Leela, welcome to Sister Power. Thanks, Sharon. It's so good to be here with you. I'm so glad we, we did it. Finally. Yes, finally. Finally. Here we here. are. Everybody's so busy. Everybody. But this is a priority. It is. But you know, they say, well, if you want to get something done, give it to a busy person. Give it to a busy woman. Oh. There you go. Thank you. This is what I'm talking about. But before we dig deeper into uh, Women's Fund of Hawaii, mm -hmm. I want to thank you so much for bringing Roxanne Gay in, the author, Roxanne Gay, mm -hmm. for Women's History Month. That was awesome. I thought so, too. Um, you're welcome. And I didn't really do that much. She was on her way to Australia, and we just got lucky, really. And um, I just thought she was so, so smart and, and so entertaining and um, really intelligent. Have you had a chance to pick up any of her books yet? Yes, and speaking of her books, you know, of course, my friend, my girlfriend and I were there, Daphne, uh, Daphne uh, Barbie Wooten, who's a civil rights attorney. Her husband, who is an attorney's sister, I know this can get compli complicated, sister, Stephanie Stokes Oliver, she was telling her about Roxanne, and she said, well, Roxanne Gay wrote a story in my book, Black Ink, forward by Nikki Giovanni. Oh. This is how exciting we were. So Roxanne Gay is just, I mean, she wrote about I Once Was Miss America. Oh. So that's how we enjoyed Roxanne so, so very much. We were calling our friends. This is, this is um, Stephanie Stokes' book. We were telling our friends on the mainland that we had Roxanne Gay here. Mm -hmm. And if anyone who is not familiar with Roxanne Gay, if you just, you know, were born last night, um, Roxanne Gay is the author of World of Wakanda and the mm -hmm. first black woman to write for Marvel. Yep, yep, she is. And um, she's, I mean, her imagination is just crazy. I've been um, obsessed with reading her ever since we found out that she was coming. And I think I spent half of my plane ride just last week coming home from the mainland um, in tears reading this novel that she wrote about a Haitian American who went back to Haiti and then was kidnapped. And the, the, the first half, of course, is very distressing because the woman's captive. But the part that had me crying was after the trauma, there's, it, the trauma actually continues with the, the PTSD, of course. So, yeah, she's very. Very powerful and um, just really moving and, and also so funny. I don't know. She was hilarious. Yeah. She was hilarious. I loved it. Good. It was wonderful. I'm so glad I hope you we were there. Bring her back. Hope we can bring her back. Yeah, well, hopefully she'll come. It was her first time here. She seemed to be appreciating the, the surroundings and, and, and everything. So. Yeah, she expressed it at the Y Theater. Yeah. So that's a good, that was a good fundraising for Women's Fund of Hawaii. Yeah, you know, unfortunately, it was during spring break, so a lot of people were out of town. But we'll have to try to get her back. Oh, it looked crowded to me. You know, for Hawaii, I think for Hawaii standards, it definitely was. But for Roxanne standards, I was told her agent told me that oh, usually we have at least five hundred people. Oh. I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> well, this is Hawaii, so you know, especially on on a weeknight. But let's dig deeper about Women's Fund of Hawaii. And I was looking at your web page, and it said there are 679,058 women and girls in Hawaii, nearly 50% of the total population of the state. Mm -hmm. What does Hawaii's Fund of Hawaii do? Tell us a little bit about your mission and vision. 
So our mission is to support uh, programs that empower women and girls across the state. So not just in Honolulu, although many of the programs we support are here on Oahu, but statewide. Um, and our vision is a Hawaii where every woman and girl is safe, uh, financially secure, healthy, and um, empowered to reach her fullest potential. So what we do is we raise money and we give that money away in the form of, I guess, small-ish grants. The max amount has been $5,000 for some years now. And the way it works is we have grants periods in the spring and in the fall. So your nonprofit could apply for a grant as long as the program is for women and girls. Um, we will consider your application. And when I say we, I'm referring to our grants committee. And the committee is comprised of women, I want to say leaders, because they all kind of are yeah. um, leaders. They're, they're women who've worked in social services or in the nonprofit sector or in the legal profession or um, psychology. I mean, we don't have specific um, criteria. Um, it's not like an interview process to be on the committee, but um, they tend to be women who are really passionate about what's happening in our community. And frankly, being on our grants committee is a great way um, to explore just that. You know, what is going on our, in our community? What do these organizations feel our women and girls need to do better, uh, to be healthier, to, um, you know, to, to get a better education, to, to be more successful at work, um, to recover from trauma? whether it be a domestic violence situation or having emerged from incarceration. Oh, so. my goodness. And, and, and there was a place, I mean, I also read something about, when well, you said incarceration, which, which you can jog my memory, about there are more Native Hawaiian women who are incarcerated here in Hawaii. There are. So the statistics tell us, the data tell us that Native Hawaiian women comprise 19% of our population. At the same time, they comprise 39% of the incarcerated female population. So why are they disproportionately overrepresented, right, in, in prison? That's the question. And quite honestly, I've been to WCCC, and I feel like just, I mean, I'm not taking notes or writing anything down, but I feel like it's more than 40% Ooh. who are Native Hawaiian or Pacific Islander um, in, in uh, WCCC. So that's a problem. That tells me that we have a problem here. Yeah, the, it did say 40% of incarcerated women are Native Hawaiian, mm -hmm. though they comprise less than 20% of our state. Right. State's female population. So the... What role does Women Fund Hawaii do to decrease this percentage? Well, we're, we do a number of things. We support a number of programs to um, make life a little less painful for, for women who are incarcerated. And we support programs also for um, women who are reentering the community. Um, recidivism, I think, is a big challenge mm. where where a woman might come out of prison and get caught up in the same patterns that led her to be in prison before. So we invest in programs that help women to, you know, basically take the first step out of prison on the right foot. Um, but as far as uh, to address your question, we're looking at programs, uh, funding programs that happen earlier in uh, women's lives to help to ease the stress of poverty or to address trauma of domestic abuse or to curb um, addiction and substance mm. abuse. So programs that help uh, essentially people to be healthier and to, to get some skills um, or more education in order to be able to do well and avoid situations. Well, what? Um, off, well, just off of the top of your head, what mm -hmm. organizations have you given grants to that help the Native women 
the native Hawaiian women who are incarcerated? Do you name any programs yeah. in case our viewers are listening out there and sure. they need to refer their cousin, their aunt, their sister, mother? Well, I, my, 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 my first reaction was going to be to name a program that works with women who, who are currently incarcerated. Okay. Um, so Read to Me International is one that I absolutely love. So what they do is they work with women who are in prison and help them to write a story. Because a lot of these women, th this is a big problem too, Sharon, right? Because a lot of the women who are in prison, they have kids. Yes. So, you know, that's so hard on a family when mom's in, in, in prison. Um, what's happening with the children, right? And then what's also happening with the family as far as that family's income, right? That, that, that family's economic um, status, if you will, or, or, or possibility takes a hit when mom goes to prison. So this program helps. It, it, it's, it's almost a, a, a therapeutic process for these moms to uh, write stories that they illustrate, and, and the good people at Read to Me help with that. And then they also make these um, stories by the moms into books, or grandmoms, by the way, okay. into books. And then they also record the incarcerated woman reading the story. And it, it promotes the connection, or at least tries to keep the connection between a mother and her kids, or a grandmother and her, her grandchildren, as it were. And I really love that one. And there's another one, um, Hawaii Friends of Restorative Justice. Um, I guess I should disclose that I have a bit of a, a bias because I'm on that board. Um, but they provide uh, restorative circles uh, to allow the incarcerated person, in our case it's women, but Hawaii Friends of Restorative Justice also works with men who are incarcerated. To, um, they promote healing, to talk about with the person whom they may have hurt what happened and that they're sorry, assuming they are. And they also make a plan for when they're going to go back out into the community. You know, what's, where, where are you going to live? What's your job? What are you doing for transportation? Things like that. So um, I, I love that. Yeah. Well, that's a good well, but On a better note, mm -hmm. is you do wonderful teas and champagne and, and I know we have a beautiful picture of the ladies having fun at one of your events on a, on a lighter note to let you know it's not all about um, helping it, it is about helping and sharing and motivating and empowering women but you also have fun there you are now what was going on at this picture so this was at our main fundraiser, as I explained to you. We have um, a major annual fundraiser, or actually I didn't explain that. What I explained was that we do fundraising. Okay. But our main event is Tea and Champagne. It's in the spring. Last year it was in May. This year it is a week from tomorrow. Ooh. So here we are. Um, I'm with Monica Lau's table, and she is one of our Emerald sponsors this year, Monica Lau Photography. Super grateful to Monica. Um, and we're just having a great time. It's a really nice event, Sharon. We, it's about 350 mostly women, but you know, it's a great place for single guys too, I suppose, men or, or, or not single, you know, to be surrounded by all that beauty. Um, and look, you're talking about beauty. Look at the dessert. Dad. The dessert is crazy. So that is our, part of our fundraising activity is it, it's called the dessert dash and the, we, are so blessed here in Hawaii to have so many generous chefs who donate dessert. So our request is, will you please donate dessert for 10 for our fundraising activity at Tea and Champagne? And the way it works is, um, let's say you and I are at the same table and we have eight companions. And when the dessert dash time comes, um, our MC this year, it's Tanya Joaquin, will say, okay, everybody, put in your bids. And, and we'll put in what we can. You know, maybe, maybe you'll put in 100. Maybe I'll put in 50. Maybe I'll put in 5,000. I don't know what mood I'm in. But um, so we each make a bid. And the idea is that the table that bids the highest gets first choice. Now, these desserts are on display from the time guests arrive until the time of the dash. Well, when we come back. So, we're going to continue this wonderful conversation. Sounds I, good. I want one of those to deserve. Yeah, you do. All right, we'll okay. be right back. That is so fun. Yeah, you it's super fun. Oh. You should come. Do you want to come?
I'll see you there. Aloha, I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm coming to you every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock, live from Think Tech Hawaii. And on our show, we talk about taking your health back. And what does that mean? It means mind, body, and soul. Anything you can do that makes your body healthier and happier is what we're going to be talking about. Whether it's spiritual health, mental health, fascia health, beautiful smile health, whatever it means, let's take healthy back. Aloha. Aloha and welcome to At the Crossroads. I'm your host, Keisha King. You can catch me every Wednesday, alive at five. I'll see you there. And our special guest is Layla Goldstein. And our theme for today is When Women Thrive, Communities mm -hmm. Prosper. And we were speaking briefly about the break. We'll come back to the beautiful dessert. But you're from, you were born in Bangkok. I was. How long, how long ago were you? Was I there? born? No, I <laughs> want to. Look, <laughs> women, we don't tell, I'll tell my age. But were you there for a long period of time? Um, no, but um, I was fortunate enough that my parent, my mom is Thai as well. I'm, I, I'm Thai. My mom is Thai. My father is from Queens in New York. But they both really valued um, the connection with my mom's side of the family. So I went back frequently. And then as a graduate student, I spent summer studying there. And I've tried to take my kids back there oh. as much as possible to, to maintain that connection. And sure. I, really, I really do feel um, close with, with my, my home country, my other home country. I understand. But, Sisters in Park of Hawaii, we're planning a girls' trip 2022. South Africa. So I feel you. I, I want that connection to the mm -hmm. motherland as well. But I'm having so much fun listening and hearing about Women's Fund of Hawaii. Um, women and girls are so close to my heart because of my organization as well. And you've attended my organization. Mm -hmm. I'm going to attend your organization. Thank you. Or let's talk about April 12th, tea and champagne. Let's talk a little bit about that. Because I think you only have a few tickets left. We only have a few tickets left. That is true. Oh. Um, and I, I hope that people will, you know, respond to this, uh, this invitation to please go on the site. The event site is tea and champagne, spelled out, dot swell, like golly that swell, oh. dot gives. So um, that's where tickets are available right now, and we would love to have people. Um, I think one of the things that's really super about this event that maybe some, some folks don't realize is that for the ticket price of $125, dinner is included and champagne is included until, and, until it runs out. And tell us about the location. Oh, yes, of course. It's at the Kahala. So My favorite. That, the ballroom, you know the ballroom that's downstairs? Yeah, that's where we are. And we have a lucky draw activity. Um, lots of fabulous prizes. Wow. Yeah. Nice art. Nice art. Peggy Hopper donated a print. Oh, I have um, some of her work. Oh, this one's a beauty. And then Mike Field, um, who's a friend of mine, who has a gallery over on the Big Island, sent something over that's just phenomenal. I might have to win that myself. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. But, I mean, definitely the, the best. The best part, I think, is the dessert dash because those are on display all night. And as I was explaining to you before, uh, the table sort of bid for that. Oh. And then the reason why it's a dash is because, well, let's say that we're, we're in a tie. Let's say that our table and the Kamehameha Schools table have both bid $5,000. Well, then we got to rush over there with our table number in case they want the same dessert as we do. So... so Kamehameha is one of your sponsors? They are our title sponsor. Oh. And it's such an incredible honor, Sharon. I'm really humbled by this, um, the confidence that they're placing in us by, by, by being our title sponsor. Um, and I believe it's because, well, I believe it's because we do good work. But yes. I also believe it's because our programs benefit Native Hawaiian women and girls, which, of course, is, you know, which is what they're about, um, supporting. Uh, Native Hawaiian, Native Hawaiian education. Well, that's, mm -hmm. this is where we live. Yes. You know, let's start in our own backyard mm -hmm. and improving and motivating and educating our, our women 
right here in Hawaii. I love that mission. Yeah, that's one of our guidelines, actually, for our grant giving. Um, is that, I mean, basically, all things being equal, uh, we prefer to fund programs for Native Hawaiian women well, and girls. Uh, women and girls. Women and girls. What yeah. are some of the challenges of Women's Fund of Hawaii? Um, probably the same challenges as for many nonprofits. You know, it, it uh, dollars, really. Uh, we, we get so many requests for funding, and it's amazing because people look to us for support, and, and I, I take that seriously. It's a, it's a great honor um, to be asked. Um, at the same time, it's so difficult because there are so many worthy and necessary programs that we can't afford to fund. Oh. So, um, yeah, I would say the biggest challenge is to try to continue and grow our grant-making portfolio. And we're launching our, our own program this year, too. Tell us about it. I, I would love to tell you about it. Oh, okay. um, is it a secret? Top secret? It's not a secret. It for it's part not two? a secret. Okay. Oh, part two. Oh. Of well, our show. Of our show. We have you back. No, but if you want to tell us now, uh, that's fine. Well, we, it's, it's a partnership between Women's Fund and AAUW, which is American Association of University Women and Seeds of Peace. Oh, um, I know Seeds of Peace and yeah. Laura and Maya. Yes, they yes. They do such good work. They do fabulous work. And they, two years ago, I think, launched a program called Youth Talk Back. Yes. So that program was adopting their peace curriculum, their peace building curriculum, and um, giving that program to youth and also involving an action planning component. So basically, you know, let's teach these kids how to go out there and do something about what they think is important, what they are concerned about in their communities. Um, so AAUW and I went to SEEDS and we said, we need something like that for girls because Women's Fund came out with a report that showed that I think it's only 9% of Pacific Islander women and girls get a bachelor's or higher. Nine percent? Only nine percent. Yeah. Do and you think it's because of the cost of living here in Hawaii, the lack of educating our women and girls? Why do you think the, the figure is so low? I do think it, part of it is the cost of living. Okay. You know, I do think that. And um, yeah, I mean, being, being poor is stressful. <laughs> you know, and, and I don't know that education is a priority if you've got a lot of other challenges happening. But just life um, skills can help, though. Right. And then knowing that you have the support, that you're not alone. Right, and so that's what we're going to try to do. So Girls Talk Back is going to be a program uh, that incorporates a lot of what's been done with Youth Talk Back, but we're also bringing in a feminist piece. And so by feminist piece, I mean talking about, well, what is feminism and who are the women who have made a difference here in Hawaii? And um, talking about that and providing mentors for young women. So the pilot's going to be this summer in Waimanalo, and we're currently recruiting. Um, if any, recruiting? Recruiting girls, girls, ages 14 to 18, who want to participate in Girls Talk Back. Well, let Sisters Empowering Hawaii know. Because this is what we do. We motivate, educate, and empower all women and girls. And I would love to be able to help Women's Fund of Hawaii with that. That's Just amazing. reach out in touch. Thank you. I have another question for you. Yeah. Since we're talking about gift giving, you know, and donations, besides donating monies, what are other ways to support the fund? On, give us other ways to give and help. If we don't have the funds to help, to give to Women's Funds of Hawaii, what else can we do? Well, if, um, if there are folks out there who have either their own business or connections, um, we're always thrilled to have prize and donation items okay. because we have a lucky draw at our fundraiser. We also we have a second fundraiser that we do in the fall, or uh, not the fall, I guess it's technically the fall, it's in November usually. We do um, a costume bowling tournament. Oh, how fun! It's bowling. so fun. Yeah, 
It's really fun. It used to be a golf tournament, but, um, well, for one thing, the golf tournament is very labor intensive. And for another thing, the executive director of Women's Fund of Hawaii doesn't actually play golf. Oh, no, she doesn't. No, she doesn't. Doing this president so, of Sisters of Hawaii, we yeah. don't play golf either. Yeah. It's okay. okay. We, yeah. So, um, but bowling's fun. And then, you know, you like to have as much fun as possible while you're having fun. Yeah. So you got to have a costume theme. Right, so we do that in the fall, and we'll be um, providing prize packages for bidding, um, that type of thing. And so we love the support of of businesses if they can, or people who who know others who might be willing to help us out, because that ends up translating into more giving power. Well, we have another picture too. I mean, you ladies have fun, and this is what I'm loving about it. And tell us about the ladies. Okay, what so is this, going is, on. this is a crazy crowd here. So this is at Tea and Champagne last year as well. And a couple of these women, do you recognize those? Some, I don't know if some of your listeners would recognize those things that are on their heads. They're the old-fashioned hot water bottles. Well, I would recognize them. Yeah, it. and I did too. <laughs> oh so goodness. those are preemptive um, hangover cures. So the hosts of that table uh, created that headgear. Um, so, yeah, people come ready for a good time. Okay, well, let's look at the next photo then. Let's see what's going on here. Oh, look at the table. Yeah, okay, so Star No Tool Marcus and Fisher is uh, one of our sponsors. One of their attorneys over there, Sharon Lovejoy, um, has very generously sponsored us for two years in a row now. And um, so I, I'm not sure who set that up, but thank you, whoever it was. It's got, it's got our stuff, right? It's got the champagne, which, as I mentioned, flows until it runs out. Um, and then that's one of our T-shirts there. Uh, the daughter of one of my board members is an extremely gifted designer. She has her own T-shirt line called Dolky. And I asked her, I said, you know, would you do a capsule for Women's Fund? And so that's one of the shirts she came out with. So we'll have some shirts on sale. Not that one, I might only have a couple left. Okay. Um, but we have new and different ones this year. And the, the, um, the, the profits go 100%, 100%. to us. Yeah. Well, to since us. we only have just a few minutes left, what's next for Women's Fund of Hawaii? Well, um, Girls Talk Back. That's definitely next. We're, we're, we're hot on the trail of creating something incredible. And um, my vision is that uh, this pilot will be a success and we will be able to continue maybe next summer with uh, programs in other areas of, um, I mean, Oahu initially, uh, that, think, that think that it would be a good program for them, for, that girls in their communities would uh, benefit from such a thing. So that's... That's the first thing on my radar, and you know, if, if I could have anything I wanted, I think we would look at doing something also for um, women leaving incarceration who want to continue their education. Oh, I love that. Leela, this has been a pleasure. I've learned so much more, not about, uh, only about you, but Women's Fund of Hawaii, and thank you so much for spending part of your day with Sister Power. We enjoyed you. We need to have a part two and continue this conversation. And in closing. Thank again, you, Sharon, so much for having me. It's always amazing to see you. Oh, you're very, very welcome. Thank you. Sister Power's mission is that women everywhere will learn to live as sisters, to respect each other's differences, to heal each other's wounds, to promote each other's progress, and to benefit from each other's knowledge. Sister Power looks forward to you tuning in every other Thursday on Think Tech Hawaii at 4 p.m. Oceans of Aloha, peace and love.